LinkedIn believes B2B marketing can be B2 brilliant, B2 bold, and B2 breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose built to make B2B mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer journey while building your brand. A platform with the trusted data and lead generation you need to beat KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always being seen by those who matter. So get ready to be to boldly go where no marketers have gone before. Because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything it can be. Rethink your B2B marketing LinkedIn ads and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. On this episode of Winfluence. I don't necessarily say that one way is right versus wrong. What I do say is that there are certain capacities that you can go in leveraging, working with influencers and creators that aren't necessarily as cost effective or beneficial. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. We've gotten into a little bit of a pattern here on the show recently. Seems like every other interview or so is some founder or executive at an influencer marketing software company. Now, there are lots of reasons for that. First, they're anxious to mention their platform to you since they know the people who listen to Influence are interested in and often shopping for solutions to problems with influencer marketing. That makes this group of people easy interviews. My goal in having them on the show is to certainly talk about their platform so you might have a good idea of something else out there, but then I try to dive deeper into their worldview, at least as it pertains to influencer marketing. We discuss and debate issues and such that are relevant to them. That gives you more than just a veiled ad for their thing and helps us push the thinking. By the way, no one pays to be interviewed on this show. The editorial part of it is just me deciding that person has something worth sharing and talking about. Sure, I've interviewed Pete Kennedy from Tagger, that's our show sponsor, and some folks from companies that sponsor the Marketing Podcast Network, of which Winfluence is a member, but being interviewed on Winfluence is not part of any ad buy for them, just so you know. Austin Rosenthal actually caught my attention recently, but didn't pay me either. He just reached out via email. He said he didn't agree with my conclusion from an earlier conversation. Now, if you'll remember back a few episodes, we talked to Aaron Bruce of Posse.io. His platform allows brands to tap into an influencer's audience by targeting advertising to them with the creator's permission, but for a CPM payout to the influencer and no need for the influencer to create any sort of content. My headline or conclusion on that episode was, are we doing influencer marketing all wrong? So Austin took issue. It's no surprise Austin Rosenthal is the chief operating officer at LionEyes.ai. It is an influencer marketing software platform in the traditional sense. You use LionEyes.ai to search and discover, then engage and manage influencer campaigns. So I could see why he would object to me inferring that we might be doing influencer marketing wrong by not focusing on just ad buys against influencer audiences. I welcomed the pushback and knowledge about LionEyes.ai, but only if Austin would come on the show and explain both. So, a new tool and a little fun discussion is in order today on Winfluence. Quickly, though, let me tell you a little something more about Winfluence's presenting sponsor, the aforementioned Tagger. It is a complete influencer marketing software solution. With Tagger, you can find, engage, hire, collaborate, review, and measure all your influence marketing efforts. I kicked out a report recently and made sure to plug my costs into each creator's data in the system. That meant the report that I sent to the client had cost per thousand impressions, cost per engagement, cost per view, and all those other metrics the management team likes. Now, I could go on, but you know I use Tagger every day. You know I love it, and you should check it out too. I think it might be right for your brand or agency. Go to jason.online slash Tagger and get a free demo. That's all I ask. Just go take the demo. Just see if it's right for you. If it's not, okay. But if so, well, now you've got an option jason.online slash tagger. 
someone disagreed with me, you know I'm going to have him on the show. Austin Rosenthal of lioneyes.ai is next on Winfluence. LinkedIn believes B2B marketing can be B2 brilliant, B2 bold, and B2 breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose built to make B2B mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer journey while building your brand. A platform with the trusted data and lead generation you need to beat KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always being seen by those who matter. So get ready to be to boldly go where no marketers have gone before. Because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything it can be. Rethink your B2B marketing LinkedIn ads and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Austin, let's get into the super fun part of this conversation right away. You reached out to me and said that you enjoyed our discussion with Aaron Bruce from Posse.io. As a quick reminder for the folks listening, that was back on, I think, May 30th of this year. And Aaron Bruce's company, Posse.io, allows you to tap into an influencer's audience with ad targeting, even without having to engage the influencer in content creation. Now, my headline and conclusion from that episode was, Maybe we're approaching influencer marketing all wrong. Maybe we could just use their audiences and we don't have to deal with all the headache of dealing with creators. You said in the email, you disagreed with the conclusion of that episode. I love that. Tell me more. Yeah, absolutely. When I say I disagree, I think that it's always interesting to incorporate various different channels and ways of targeting, right? Actually, Posse.io takes an approach that is where we started, which was being able to pull the following and audiences of profiles and then being able to target them in certain capacities. While effective, absolutely, there's just so many other values that obviously come with working with content creators. There's the viral component, people resharing content, the content that's being generated and and everything in between. I don't necessarily say that one way is right versus wrong. What I do say is that there are certain capacities that you can go in leveraging, working with influencers and creators that aren't necessarily as cost-effective or beneficial in that we're seeing this trend from working with these macro and celebrity influencers that cost tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of dollars to engage with, where if you spread the wealth and you start going after various different types of creators that have different types of audiences and niches and generate 50 times the content that you otherwise would and your cost per impression is now much lower than working with your traditional macro and celebrity influencer. I think that is something that you can certainly lean into when we're talking about quote unquote traditional influencer marketing. With that said, totally understand the other, the other strategy as well. (laughs) Sure. We're all, we're all friends here. No big deal. So, and obviously as you started to answer that question there, I think people certainly get a sense of your different perspective on the marketplace. You are the co-founder and chief operating officer at Lion Eyes. It can be found online at lioneyes.ai. Tell us a little bit about the platform, the company, and your approach to the influencer space as a resource. Yeah, absolutely. So I think kind of getting a full understanding of the story and why something is built and then going into the product and the problems that it solves is really important. And that myself and one of the other co-founders, we really started as creators and influencers ourselves. You know, we had this knack of building followings to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of followers which is when we were really exposed to a lot of the process implications that are usually put on marketers to build and manage these teams of creators. As you said, even when we initially got on, it is a challenge. There's so much that goes into finding the right creator and recruiting them to be a part of the program and level setting expectations and contracting and tracking and reporting and back and forth communication. There's all of these elements that if streamlined and if simplified, can actually make it an efficient channel to either pilot or use as a growth mechanism. So about four years ago is when Chris and I started really an agency to peel back all of the layers and build the blueprint of what this 
operationally efficient engine would look like using all of the other tools and platforms that were out there as really guidelines to learn, you know, where there were gaps and how to perfect this process. We started, you know, selling what we had and really out kicking our coverage, which is when we brought on the third co-founder and our CTO to help really just scale up the platform and build it out and take what we had and, you know, grow from there. And about a year and a half ago is when we started Lionize. And if you really think about Lionize from a structural standpoint, it's essentially a hybrid job recruitment platform where we build out up front the strategy or a program brief or think of it as a job description. And what our system does, which is very different than anything that's out there, is we've built a search engine, which is what leverages this machine learning technology capability to source creators directly from the ecosystem of social. So we don't have necessarily, well, we do have a database of tens of millions of creators, but what we want to do is find the most authentic and organic creator for your particular program. So we go and source them directly from the platform itself identify them, then recruit them, kind of like this job recruitment feel. And then on the back end, it's like a matchmaking experience where the marketer has full control to vet and select who they want to work with. And then the system takes care of all the reminders, the communication, the tracking, the reporting, the payment and everything in between. Okay. So let me just ask this question. And as always, I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit. Because if you are sourcing the sort of search and discovery mechanism of influencers directly from the platforms, the TikToks, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, et cetera, why is that any different than what other tools typically do, which is they index all that stuff that's out there, pull it into their own database and analyze it themselves? Great question. So long story short, time. It's very time consuming and it's laborious. And there's two really main reasons. I would say one, having a central database is really excluding the 99.9% of people who you really would like to participate in the program. And if you're tapping into this pre-existing group, which we don't like to say, but oversaturated group of individuals that have worked with brand after brand after brand, there's a less authentic and organic feel of the partnership. If you have someone you know, advocating for a fitness company and then going and doing a skincare product and then this, that there's no real brand affinity. So we find that going and and identifying people down to the program and specifications and parameters that brands are really setting forth of who their ideal influencer is. It's just a much nicer feel and look. Now, the other side of it is really, why do we do that beyond that? It's the time saving element. If you put yourself in the shoes of a marketer and you have tens of thousands, millions of creators to parse through in a database to decide who ultimately you think works for you and then reach out to them with only about 5% of people coming back and saying, yeah, I want to work out with you. You are wasting tens of hours a week just doing the sourcing and the recruitment. Whereas our system finds these people, handles the recruitment, gets people bought into the idea where you just have the control on the back end to vet and select who you want to work with. So huge just time-saving component as well. Okay, so if your system is handling the recruitment and everything like that, it sounds to me like it's a bit of a managed service. So if I'm a customer of yours, can I use your platform myself or is it somebody on your team that's doing the work? Great question. This is where we just didn't want to necessarily leave our agency roots behind because we have hundreds of programs of experience under us in every niche, every category. We want to help with the initial onboarding and strategy, right? So in the sense that we do dedicate what we consider an influencer marketing expert or account manager to every single program that we bring on, we help with that initial kind of building out and they'll be there from initial strategy through execution and optimization. With that said, the product was built to be very hands-off and the way it really works is a brand will come to us or a marketer will come to us and say, I want to go and promote this brand and here's kind of what I'm thinking of you know, what I want as a result. And here's the type of creators. And really from that point forward, it's very hands-off other than them selecting the creators that are coming through as applicants to participate in the program. So it's a little bit of a managed service component to it, but primarily a self-service platform. Always the upfront work of just building out a sound strategy to execute on what your goals are is what's of utmost importance. 
Interesting. Now, when I hear that sort of managed service element, just because I've been in the ministry, in the industry as long as I have, I think dollar signs. I think, uh oh, this is expensive. So, what type of price category are we looking at here to use you guys? So, this was why another reason that this was built was when we started the agency side of it about four years ago. Everything out there is cost prohibitive. There's a huge barrier to be able to pilot and test and see if it's an, even an adequate channel for you and whatever you're looking to achieve. So the way that we built our product is to really revolve around and be flexible from an agreement standpoint. We want you to be able to get what you want out of the product and be able to see whether you want to scale up from there. So the way that our pricing model really works is we don't go to people and say, hey, you need $50,000 budgeted in order to even work with us. You could get away with having $1,000, $1,500 per month to be able to put towards not only the managed service license and the product, but also being able to incentivize and go out and pay influencers as well. So our base subscription, depending on a couple of different variables, falls around about $1,000 per month. So it is not a very cost prohibitive thing to be able to pilot. And we offer really an opt-out ability because we want to prove ourselves to you. So we're not going to lock you in, tie your hands behind your back and say, hey, you're on a year-long agreement. We want to be flexible and make sure that we're doing you service before we, we ultimately engage in longer-term capacity. Well, you're speaking my language and you're speaking the language of a lot of people out there, I know, because the advent of influencer marketing platforms has been great for people who have a lot of money. Right. And it has been prohibitive for people who don't, even though they still need the same types of services, the same discovery, the same help figuring this all out. And there's plenty of, you know, medium and small businesses out there who could see huge upticks from the use of just simple influence marketing programs. Yep. But they look at the price tags of these software companies and think, well, I can't even, I can't even afford to do it. Or agencies. I mean, well, once you start doing things a lot more manually, obviously it causes a lot more human intervention and time and people, you know, time is money and things along those lines. So that's for sure one side of it. And then the other side of it that we're just really trying to capitalize on is that a lot of these tools and agencies and softwares revolve around helping e-commerce brands, selling digital, you know, products digitally. We've built our search engine to be very focused around geographically targeting and sourcing. So, you know, we work a lot with different franchise types of restaurants and quick service type of products and brands and services and things along those lines. So we think that a lot of these other tools and agencies focus on about 10% of the market, whereas there's, you know, 90% of people that can benefit from a strategy like this. They just didn't necessarily have the means to be able to uh, test the waters. Very nice. So I want to ask this question. I have a current client project. Yeah. I've just defined a brief for them. I know kind of what I'm looking for, what I want. I'm one of these people who believes that, hey, the creator needs to be a part of creating the concept. Like, I'm not going to say, right. I want you to create this many posts that say this many things over this amount of time. I'm going to say, here's what we're trying to accomplish. Here's what we have in mind, but we want you to create something that's going to be authentic for your audience. Yes. So if I have this brief defined, can I jump over to lionize.ai today and dump it in there and start and do something relatively inexpensive to get a recommendation back? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's what we do. And it's it's so quick, right? Like you you have this information. A lot of people don't even have this information. So whether you have the brief set or not, you know, having the brief will make us be able to flip the switch and begin the recruitment process tomorrow. But yeah, that sounds spot on. And I love your thought process behind it because the more guidelines you give creators, or at least an understanding of what you want them to do without tying their hands behind their back and letting them be who they are is always the best approach. It's my personal preference. As people who listen to this show know, I believe in the power of the creator. That's you're tapping into these people for a reason. Right. And it's not because they take instructions well. It's it's because they know their audience better than you do and they know how to create content for them. One thing that really also frustrates me too, which I've said here before, is I deal with a lot of talent managers and I love them because they help me find the right creators. I have a list of folks that I kind of email and say, hey, I've got a client project coming up and here's what it looks like and you have anybody in mind. And they give me some suggestions, which is productive and fun and good. The thing that frustrates me the most is when they come back and say, well, okay, I need to know, A, your budget, how many posts you want on which platforms, et cetera. And I'm like, okay, that is a very transactional checkbox approach to influencer marketing. I don't know how many posts I want. I want how many it's going to take to accomplish the goal. 
And if you can do that with one YouTube video, awesome. If it takes a thousand Instagram posts, okay. Tell me what that looks like too. Right. Yeah. And, and that's why we actually built. So you can almost think of the structure of agreements as having a baseline saying, Hey, you have to post once in story two times. And what we want to do is be able to take that feedback and see what the return is before we engage with people on a larger scale or in a larger capacity. So taking all of the activity that's coming in, seeing who's performing the best, and then what we call is reactivating individuals to continue to be a part of the program, the initiative to get the job done, as you just mentioned, is the right method. And, and you know, we can get into like strategies and why we um, push people in going certain directions with the strategies that we deploy. But yeah, you've, you've kind of seen it, obviously, and have a lot of experience and, and how to go about this and approach it the right way. Well, I, I certainly hope so. And I don't always do it perfectly, but at least I think I have the right prescription in mind anyway. Yeah. All right. I want to step away for just a second. But when we come back, I want to get a little deeper into the where the AI kicks in in your platform, which I think has a lot more to do with search and discovery than anything else. Mm -hmm. And I want to kind of arm wrestle with you a little bit about the division of using artificial intelligence, machine learning and computers versus the human decision making that is so important to me. So we're talking to Austin Rosenthal. He's the COO of lionize.ai. When we come back, the arm wrestling commences. Don't go away. You know, we talk a lot about influencer marketing software on this show. And the worst thing about it for a lot of you is that influencer marketing software for small businesses is too expensive, right? Well, Reach Influencers solves that problem. Now your small business can find, engage, and manage micro and nano influencers, the ones you can afford to work with. And Reach Influencers costs as low as $100 per month. Are you kidding me? No, it's true. Go to CaptureTheInfluence.com slash podcast and see for yourself. Find, engage, manage, influence with software built and priced for your sized business. CaptureTheInfluence.com slash podcast. Back with Austin Rosenthal, the COO of LionEyes.ai. His platform for influencer marketing uh, bakes in artificial intelligence into the influencer discovery process to help surface what he claims are the perfect influencers for you, or at least the website claims that. I don't know if Austin actually claimed it on the previous you know, recording here. But anyone who listens to Influence regularly knows I trust the algorithms and the artificial intelligence mechanisms only to an extent. Austin, tell us why AI makes influencer discovery better, and then I want to play devil's advocate a bit. Yeah, I mean, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head in that technology can be used to a certain extent, and that's to help streamline and automate processes, especially on the upfront side of the sourcing and identification and finding the right person who has been talking about the things that you're interested in can just do it a heck of a lot faster than any human could in terms of scrolling through posts and profiles and things like that. So you can think of the search engine as being you as a marketer come onto the platform and set your parameters like a follower range of interest and keywords to match on biographies and captions people have been using in the past or hashtags that people have used or been tagged in the past, lookalike profiles. And what the technology does is it just uses all the information that you provided And it goes out to the source itself to identify and source, but then qualify them. Because if you are managing not only the sourcing, but the qualification of creators, making sure that they hit certain engagement rate thresholds and post frequency and have an adequate biography, picture and profile, there's a lot that goes into it. And it's very time consuming. So our idea was, let's save the marketer 98% of their time by handling all of the sourcing and then also the recruitment. And then on the back end, of course, giving that control back to the marketer as all of these applicants come rolling in for you to do your due diligence and you to do your research and seeing what their audience makeup is and making sure that they fit the exact mold of the brand and wanting them to be an extension of you all and having the selection control on the back end. So it's more or less just a a way to save a ton of time up front so that you're just only worried about the population of people that are interested in working with you, analyzing that group and selecting who you would ultimately like to move forward with. Okay. That sounds great. 
but there are a couple sticking points that I have on this. First of all, influencer and social media data is really messy. When an AI engine is pulling an influencer into a recommended list, they're doing it based on, as you mentioned, keywords and captions or bios. Really sophisticated ones might perhaps run image or video analysis too, but people in general are not consistent. My bio might say husband, father, sports junkie, which means I'm not going to emerge at all on lists for marketing influencers or bourbon aficionados, both categories of which I've been paid to create content around. So how does AI account for the messiness of all this data? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's where I think your idea of human intervention is always needed. So for example, one of the other parameters, if an individual is not capturing the right people from the initial keywords, there's always an optimization period saying, hey, maybe we need to tweak some of these search parameters to go and find the right people. There's also the element that's baked into the search algorithm where you can provide us a list of profiles and it'll go and find suggested individuals that fit that umbrella type of persona as opposed to using the keywords and the hashtags and the things along those lines that are a little bit more outward facing. So there's a lot of things that go into not only the initial setup and the sourcing up front, but also as you go through the process and make your selections and decide who you want to move forward with, all of that information feeds back into the search engine to go and say, hey, these are the types of people that they want to work with. Go and find more of them and less of the people that they're saying no to. So it's kind of this iterative, constant feedback loop of going and ensuring that we're finding the right people for you. Sure. Well, I mean, the bottom line for me is that I can use the fanciest discovery engine in the world, but I still have to spend an inordinate amount of time culling these lists manually. And, and just to give the listeners an example of, of what I'm talking about that gets frustrating for me, and feel free, Austin, to jump in on this, but I get really frustrated when the more complex decisions of choosing influencers are not manifested in these tools. So does the content align with the brand? Does the voice or aesthetic make them more relevant? Other than image recognition and analysis, I haven't really seen any AI engine that can distinguish between, let's say, Gary Vaynerchuk, just to use an example in marketing that most people know, who's loud, obnoxious, and in your face, and he swears, and all this kind of stuff, which is not on brand for some people. Yeah. And then someone like John Jantz at Duct Tape Marketing, who has a very different personality, different persona, different brand. And that's where I think the automated and keyword-driven discovery fails us. You're spot on. You're right. There's certain components that you can't necessarily extract. But with that said, that's why we built the process to be this iterative learning. So it's not the, the, the product isn't going to exclude necessarily either of those prospects and those candidates, but what it will do is recruit them and say, hey, marketer, would you like to work with either of them? Yes or no. And the person you move for forward with helps the product learn from that and say, oh, this is the type of person or persona that we want to work with versus the Stephen A of the world that might be a little too, you know, vocal and things like that, that you're like, this isn't really good for the brand. And it won't go and continue to search for people like that. So there's always the human intervention that's needed because this is what we say. And we always say it is brands know their brands better than anyone else. Marketers know their brands better than anyone else. There's no one that can interject into the process other than those individuals to make that final selection decision of who you want to work with. That can't be replaced. That can't be automated. But what we can do is automate all of the manual and monotonous processes to get to that point so you have a very easy time making selection decisions. That's kind of where the two worlds collide a little bit. Well, and I, I realize that the, you know, the line on your all's website of find your perfect influencers is a marketing line. It's a thing. It's not a guarantee. But the conclusion we've come to here today is artificial intelligence is a quick, easy way to get a list of might be goods, not the perfect influencers. Would you agree? Yeah, I think it's the might be goods will be uh, presented to you. And then you're the one that's responsible for, you know, selecting the perfect one. So the perfect ones are in the might be goods. It's just your job to, find, to select the perfect ones from the might be goods. That we can agree on for sure. Austin Rosenthal, thank you for the discussion here. I, I don't mean to be the contrarian in the bunch about AI, but you know, social media and thus influencers are very human channels to me. So AI takes the human part out of that a lot of times. It scares me. I don't want to live in a world where decisions are made by machines, especially ones where the success is too often based on relationships. So I appreciate you pushing back and helping us see the marriage of those two sides of the aisle. Where can people find you and Lion Eyes on the interwebs? Yeah, you can uh, find us at www 
lionize.ai. And you can actually go in the top right hand corner, kind of create a program or an account for free. And that'll prompt me to probably get on a call with you, strategize a little bit and kick off a program pretty quickly. So yeah, you should be able to play around with it a little bit if you're looking for you know a little test. Awesome. Thanks again, Austin. It's been a lot of fun. All righty. Thank you so much. Always good to learn about a new software and approach to things and certainly inbounds to have someone push back on me and strike up a fun debate about our little sliver of the world here. Go check out lioneyes.ai at that very URL, lioneyes.ai. And hit Austin Rosenthal up on LinkedIn as well. We'll make sure links are in the show notes. And as I said in the interview, I'm going to run a little test with Lion Eyes too. So stay tuned. I'll report back as soon as I do that. Speaking of reporting back, I need you to report back to your friends and colleagues that Winfluence is a handy show for those who want to know more about influence and influence marketing. Share this episode, would you? Or a link to winfluencepod.com. Share this episode or a link to winfluencepod.com with those colleagues and friends and pass on a little recommendation, will you? Or drop Winfluence a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. We are on all of them. Join my Influence Marketing newsletter sent every four to six weeks or so, so it doesn't jam up your inbox. Go to jason.online slash subscribe to get on that list. And I would absolutely love for you to help make a future episode of Winfluence Awesome, kind of like what Austin did today. Ask your question about influencer influence marketing you want my answer to or take on. Send an email to jason at jasonfalls.com. If you're feeling adventurous, record a voice memo on your phone and email me that sound file. I'll let you ask the question in your own voice right here on the show using that recording. Regardless of how you ask it, I may use your comment on a future episode or your question to inspire a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. And if you need help with your influence marketing strategy, drop me a line at jason at jasonfalls.com. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. This podcast is coming to you on the MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. There's another show on MPN you might enjoy as well. I'm Matt Bailey, host of the Endless Coffee Cup. In each episode, we talk more about marketing, culture, technology, and our digital lifestyle while having a conversation over coffee. Subscribe to the Endless Coffee Cup, then pour yourself a cup, sit back, relax, and join the conversation. Just visit sitelogic.com or search for The Endless Coffee Cup wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.